So over the past few years, I've had way too much fun creating all kinds of LED projects, from custom gaming rooms, DIY floor lamps, LED speaker stands, corner lights, and many more. It's been such a great experience documenting pretty much every build right here on my channel. And while at first glance, you may assume that all this would be extremely difficult to do, but I'm here to tell you that if you can learn one simple skill that I'll be covering in today's video, it'll completely change the way you think about what's possible for your own LED projects. And that one simple skill is soldering. Now what I feel are the main reasons why people choose to avoid learning how to solder is because of all the equipment needed, too many options available to choose from, and the money required to get started. And as you can see here with my old setup that I've been using, it's a lot, and it's very intimidating, especially for someone just getting started. And everything that you see here adds up to over $200. And because of all these pain points, the good folks over at Solder came up with what I feel is one of the best ideas I've ever seen and one of the most brilliant use cases for 3D printing I've ever come across. This is one of their pre-production all-in-one soldering kits that I wish was available when I first started. It's compact, lightweight, portable, and includes everything you'll need to start your journey. I'll get things opened up and go over the essential tools before showing you close-up footage of the one simple soldering skill that'll give you the freedom to truly create custom installs. The first thing I'll go over is their USB-C rechargeable fume extractor with light. This is important to have so you're not breathing in any chemicals. When you turn it on, both the fan and the light start up. And since pretty much everything about this kit is magnetic, you can place it wherever makes the most sense. Next is their magnetic helping hands. This is what's going to help hold wires or other items steady as you work and have a simple spring-loaded sliding mechanism. These are magnetic on both the bottom and back, allowing you to use them in a variety of ways. Moving on to the soldering iron, and they've gone with the Afen A11. These have come a long ways, and this is one of the best reviewed ones out there. This is digital, so you can get precise temps, and depending on what USB-C power supply you're using, you can choose between 5, 9, 12, and 15 volts. And on a side note, they'll have an option to get this kit without the soldering iron in case you want to use something else. They also added this 3D printed neck, which allows it to slide into the holster. They've come up with a USB-C cable wheel that works great for keeping your cords in place. Once I pull them out, this is what I've been using to connect my USB-C wall plug to the soldering iron. When doing it this way, I've been able to get temps up to 842 degrees Fahrenheit. And as you can see, this is digital, so you can adjust the temps to whatever you want. When I have it plugged into a portable power pack, I've been able to get temps up to 800 degrees. Next is this handy little wire stripper. It doesn't look like much, but it's extremely functional. Simply put your wire in, push out like I'm doing now while applying pressure down, and you're done. You can also use it to cut your wire by pressing firmly down, but not out. Moving on to what's probably the most important part, and they include some high quality lead-free solder that actually works really well. But if you're wanting the easiest possible experience, I don't think anything will ever be able to beat the Kester 6040 rosin core solder that I've been using the last couple years and I will go over examples using each option here shortly. Now what's nice is if you did want to use a different solder, you can take your hex bit and a power drill and re-spool your own. Then this copper mesh is used for desoldering or removing excess solder from a pad, which I've never had to use. They include a micro cutter, which comes in handy for a variety of tasks, a couple different tweezers, and finally some flux. Flux is used to help the solder properly stick to the surface you're wanting it to. It's definitely important, but since a lot of solder already has some of this in its core, using extra is not always necessary and something I've never actually had to do myself. I'll zoom in a little bit closer so you can get a better idea of how it's all designed. And I do want to mention that above and beyond selling this as a kit like you're seeing here, they've also designed additional modules that you'll be able to choose from to truly customize what you're looking for. But perhaps what I love most is after this product is launched, they'll be providing all the 3D printed files that you'll be able to download completely free in case you want to try making this yourself at home. So now that we've covered the equipment, let's turn our attention to the four main reasons why you might need to bring out the soldering iron. This first one is probably the most common reason why, and that's if I ever need to connect two sections of LED strips together. This could be for many different reasons, but this LED board and batten project I did is a great example. I had my first section of LED strip over here, and I wanted to continue it on the other side. So I soldered my wires to the end of the strip over here, ran them around the window, and then attached them right here to continue the run. The second reason, which is right up there with the first, is if there needs to be some distance from where the LED strip is installed to where it's connected to the controller and power, or if you're wanting to use leftover lights that you cut off from a different project. So for instance, you would need to get your wires connected to the controller you're using like I'm doing here using Gladopto's Easy Push Connector Openings. 
Then the other ends of the wires are what you'd be soldering to the LED strip. A good example of this is in my gaming room build. I had my lights installed around the floating shelves and I was able to run the wires behind the wall down to the floor where I connected everything to the controller and power for a much better cable management setup. The third reason is again tied into getting lights connected to a controller. A lot of LED controllers already have a JST connector pre-installed like the Mag WLED does, which is one of my favorite options. But if you have a leftover part of an old strip that you want to use in a new project, you might want to solder the other end of a JST connector to the beginning so it turns the lights back into a simple plug and play style connection. And finally, the fourth reason I've ever needed a solder is if I wanted to attach some power injection wires to the LED strip that would run back to the main power. Now if you're paying attention, you're probably realizing that all four of these reasons have one thing in common, and that's the fact that in every situation, all you're doing is soldering some wires to the pads of the LED strip. So let's go over exactly how that's done. I'll start by using the lead-free solder that the kit comes with. I'll first place my LED strip down on the surface and use a couple of magnetic clamps to keep it in place, and make sure your fume extractor is turned on. Now with the lead-free solder, I found that having the temp on the iron set to somewhere between 700 and 750 degrees Fahrenheit worked best for me, but feel free to try higher or lower temperatures based on your results. Then with a clean tip, touch some of the solder to the bottom of the hot iron and then place it on the pad of the LED strip. From here, quickly feed more solder into the edge where the iron and the pad meet. As it melts, hold the tip in place for a brief moment and then lift up. Repeat this process for the other two pads so that you're no longer able to see any of the copper. We can set that aside and turn our attention to the wires where we can use the tool included to strip them back. I'm using some 18 gauge silicone wires which are pretty thick, but the process would be the same if you opt for some smaller 20 or 22 gauge variants. Once they're stripped back, make sure to twist them tight and then I'll be using some magnetic clamps to hold them in place. Now this is pretty much the same concept as before. Clean your tip if needed, and then apply a little bit of solder at the end. Place this under the wire, and then feed some more solder right where the wire and the iron are touching. The wire should now be hot enough so that you can melt more solder over the entire area. Then repeat this step for the other two wires. Once done, I'll use the shears to cut off a little bit of the end, so it'll be about the same size as the pad we soldered in the previous step. Let's now bring back the LED strip and line up our wires. Clean the tip if needed and apply some more solder to the iron. Next, take your wire, place it on top of the pad, and then use the side of the iron where we applied some solder and gently press down on top. This should heat everything up so that the wire will essentially melt into the solder below on the LED strip. Remove the heat, hold in place a couple seconds, and you're done. You can finish up the other two pads, but that's all there is to it, and if you take the time to learn this simple skill, hopefully you'll begin to realize just how easy it is to actually bring an idea to life when it comes to LED projects. So next I'll be doing the exact same thing, but this time I'll be using the Kester solder that has lead, so again, make sure to have your fume extractor on, and when you're done soldering, make sure to wash your hands after. Leaded solder generally has a lower melting point, and I found right around 600 degrees Fahrenheit to be the sweet spot. And the reason why I love this product is that it melts faster, it's more fluid, and it sticks to surfaces a little easier. When I get comments from people saying the solder doesn't stick or they're having issues, I can almost promise that they're not using this stuff. So if you're having any trouble, make sure to give this a try, and my guess is all your problems will go away. I'll keep playing this so you can see each step, but I did want to mention that this Kickstarter project is coming from the same team that successfully launched and fulfilled a previous campaign with their LED product called the Glorb that I was able to test out. And everyone that backed that project did receive the final version, which is now actually able to be purchased by anyone with a ship time of under 10 days. So with their prior experience and success, I'm very confident that this new project is not only going to get fully funded, but it could very well shatter some records in this space. I'll leave the links in the description if you're at all interested in more information, so make sure to check that out. Now that about does it for this one, but thank you all for watching, and as always, I hope you have a blessed day.